You are listening to a string quartet composed of two violins, a viola, and cello. There are other musical foursomes, such as woodwinds, brass, or vocal quartets. However, of all these foursomes, the string quartet has been the most popular ever since the 18th century, when the composer Haydn first explored its possibilities. In the Haydn serenade, which the quartet is playing, the first violin is singing a song, while the other three instruments play a guitar-like accompaniment. In writing music, the composer uses the voices of a musical group to say something to those who listen. Music is a kind of language. The better you understand musical language, the more you will appreciate what the composer is trying to say. The musicians, like actors or interpreters, bring to life the notes the composer has set down on the written page. Now let's meet the musicians and their instruments. First, the deepest voice of the group, the cello. This cello, played by George Sopkin, was made by Matteo Gofriller in Venice, Italy, more than 200 years ago. This viola, played by Irving Ilmer, is almost 400 years old and was made by Gasparo da Salo in Brescia, Italy. The second violin, played by Abram Loft, is the baby of the quartet. It was only in 1772 that it was made by Tommaso Balestrieri, who was strongly influenced by the work of the master violin maker Stradivarius. And here is a violin made by Stradivarius himself in Cremona, Italy in 1729. It is played by Leonard Sorkin. Let's take a close look at these instruments. They are very similar in shape. Each has a body or sound box, a bridge, four strings, a fingerboard, a neck, a scroll, and four pegs. The larger the instrument, the lower the notes it can play. The combined range of these instruments covers six octaves. Let's listen to the entire range. Usually they are played with a bow, as you've just seen. But the strings can also be played pizzicato, that is, plucked with the finger. Now let's hear the tonal range each instrument usually plays. The cello for the bass or baritone part provides the tonal foundation for the group. The viola, for the contralto or tenor part, plays principally in the range between the cello and the violin. The violins are the twins of the quartet. Together they cover the soprano and alto range. These four voices make up a complete musical unit. Through familiarity with the string quartet, you will have a better understanding of all musical groups, large or small, vocal or instrumental. For example, the string choir of the symphony orchestra is merely an enlarged string quartet, supplemented in the lower register by the bass viols. The vocal chorus, too, is divided in a similar manner, with bass, tenor, alto, and soprano parts. As graphically portrayed on the piano keyboard, you can see that human voices overlap in range. 
The instruments, too, overlap in range in a similar manner. Though these instruments have many notes in common, there is a noticeable difference in sound even when each instrument plays exactly the same note. Listen closely. This difference in sound quality, which you could hear when each instrument played exactly the same notes, is what is called tone color or timbre. Composers using tonal color, melody, harmony, and rhythm combine the sounds of these instruments to create many moods. Let's listen to some examples of moods which are found in quartet music. Here is Haydn in a gay mood. <laughs> Schubert in turn, sad. Here, Haydn suggests a lullaby. and there is fury or anger in this bit of Schubert. Now, a stately minuet by Mozart. And listen to this lively dance, a tarantella by Hugo Wolf. A little later, you're going to hear the Fine Arts Quartet in a concert, where it will play the finale movement from the Haydn Quartet in C major. Here are a few interesting things to watch for. To begin with, the theme played by the first violin. The second violin and viola pick it up. And here, the cello takes over. Sometimes the composer takes sheer delight in showing the virtuosity of the players. And here's the section from which the movement gets its nickname, Mama Papa. Listen as the argument is tossed back and forth. And who do you think got in the last word? We have met the four voices of the quartet and have learned of their versatility and their tone color. 
We have heard how they can be used to create a mood, and we have seen how a theme is carried through the instruments of the quartet. Now, let's go to the concert hall to hear the Fine Arts Quartet perform the finale movement of Haydn's Mama Papa Quartet in C major.